what'll it be this morning? Prune juice, orange juice, tomato or fig? I don't care, Mr. Blake. Neither do I. What'll it be? Prune juice, orange juice, tomato or fig? Avocado. Why, avocados don't have juice. Neither do I, and I've been telling you that for the past four years. money you're wrong. Get in. I wouldn't try any. Best you can get is a big obituary. Can I ask any questions? Sure. But you won't get any answers. Get in the back. I'll do the driving. I'm, uh, Kenneth Craig. I know. You're Michael Lynn. They tell me I'm getting to be famous. In a way. Here's my breakfast. Now I'll have my breakfast. Help yourself. No, I was surprised when you walked in. You expecting to carry me in? That wouldn't surprise me. After what I heard, I figured you would want to come along with my, uh, friend. You know, Glenn, very few people realize how important you are in this city. But you do. Oh, yeah. You run the market just about the way you please. You should get some crazy notions. The good citizens go without a lot of their daily food. That's two people on Oh, I prefer to see them get a set. They all save themselves. And uh, you found a way to collect? Oh, yeah. It's very simple. It's like this. You arrange to have one wholesaler for each item of food. Now, let me see if I know what's on your mind. You want all the farmers to deliver their celery at one spot and their lettuce at another. You uh, want the chickens to lay their eggs for only one fellow and the cows to save their milk for their favorite milk. It's easy. It can be done. You can, by controlling the supply, one can profit from the each of the Right? Your idea stinks. I wouldn't give you two cents for it. You hijack the farmers, blackjack the wholesalers, and trim the pups, and you make all the bills. No, not me. You and me. And who else? I figured you wouldn't be fooled. Yes, there is someone else. Now that we know about it, we'll forget it. And we'll forget the whole setup. It's an excellent practice. And if you're not interested in going with us, there won't be any racket. Pull in. We could do. I dropped it. You listen to me, you stay under your umbrella. It's cooler. I know. That feed would have sent me back about 75 cents. I have 
香茄子，好香茄子，好香茄子。Never rain in California, Wing. You ought to know that. Hi, Tom. Hi, Joe. How's everything, Papalopoulos? Everything is okay. I'm cooking with gas. Una buena gelato per le. Drop your piece of glass here. Oh, good morning, Mike. Hello, Fran. What's this brat doing here? I told you to keep her home. I'm sorry, Mike, but the woman who takes care of her didn't show up. Well, then get one who does. This is no place for kids. I don't like you. I don't care if you don't. Please, Francis, you mustn't say such things. This is a free country. That's what the teacher said. She's only a child, Mike. That's what you think. She's... she's... Why do you work for that kind of a man, Daddy? He's the best friend I have, Francis. You're wasting your time, Pam. That's what I keep telling Daddy. Now, now, you go on upstairs. All right, but it's against my will. <laughs> Sorry. Are you sore? Not exactly. After all, you can't help it if he's your child, can you? Don't see how I could avoid it. One thing I'll say for her, pull the vinegar. Say, I was worried about you. I was delayed. Elevator got stuck. What? Well, it was business. How's the ship? On schedule. Any complaints? No. Uh, one thing went wrong, though. Jake Lucas didn't open up his stall this morning. What happened to it? I don't know. Well, if he can't open up his place, we'll get somebody who can. You go back up to the office. I'll check on Lucas. Any calls come in, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Right. It's you. Linda, can't you keep your nose out of private business? Private business is my business. This is not your affair. Cleveland thinks so, and I'm inclined to agree with you. Why, this place is getting a lot of unusual activity, if you know what I mean. Serious, Doc? Concussion, possible skull fracture. Someone must have hit him pretty hard. Can I talk to him, Doc? In about a week, maybe. Probably see you later, Mr. Lynn. All right. Now, Linda, you can keep this out of the paper, can't you? I thought so. Why do you know something? Linda, you've got to do me a favor. I don't want this to break right now. There's something big behind it. Believe me, it's bigger than the bang Lucas got on his head. You'll get this story, I promise. Right now, I don't want it to break. It may spoil everything. I've never seen you this series before. You don't believe me, do you? Well, I... All right, I'll show you. Another angle of it. It's pretty messy, too. You didn't call a police, not yet. Maybe I can help. Why don't you tell me all about it? He's a newspaper reporter, Jan. Don't write anything in the paper, please. They will do something to my wife and to the children. Jan has three cute kids, Linda. You wouldn't like to have them on your conscience. You win. You better go home, Jan. You need any money to replace your stock? Tell Bram I said to give it to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lynn. 
Howdy, Jimmy. Thanks, Al, for the cooperation. I took advantage of it just because I'm a woman. That's why I like it, just because you're a woman. Beginning to make out. You're only getting. I have the thing to write about. Maybe I have, but I didn't promise not to get the facts. When you get the facts, that's the time to write. I don't think you'll get it. Don't go sounding off and getting a lot of innocent people in a jam. I'm going to watch you, Mike. What do you think you've been doing for the past three years? But that was business. Well, the first time you're right. Now, goodbye. I don't know why I take you, Mike. Not that you haven't got a million. In fact, you're ahead. I'm tired. Besides, I'm prematurely gray. And you're pretty. <laughs> I'm sick of it. After 20 years, I don't believe you. What's wrong, Wilkins? Uh, nothing. Why, why, why should there be anything wrong? It just doesn't make sense. Well, a man who loves less business the way you do? Well, that's the way it is. And that's the way I want it. That's the seventh one that's walked out in three days. And two fires, too. First at the Williams Ranch and then the Invincible Dairy. Then those trucks. It's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. Trucks just don't blow up. You're right, Bram. Trucks just don't blow up. <laughs> Mr. Lynn at home. Oh, you're the young doctor that lives on the fourth floor? Yes. Come right in, sir. Thank you. Oh, hello, Doc. Expect to see you at the hospital, Mr. Lynn. Why, they're too busy. Thought you might like to know how the patient's getting on. Well, how is Jake? He's improving. Fortunately, there was no fracture. At least we're there talking to him this afternoon. Why tell me? Why don't you tell me to mind my own business? Why don't you? You don't mind if I like you in spite of your silly nature. Why do you always have to be on the defense? Well, now that you're here, why don't you sit down? Thanks. Oh, good evening, Mr. Vega. Hello, Mr. Lane. Come in, gentlemen. Hello, Linda. Hi, are you ill? Oh, 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 he's a neighbor. You remember him, he took care of Lucas. What is your name? Gilbert Page. Doc Page? This is Linda Gregory. Hello, Doc. You gave me a chair for a moment. Sorry. And uh, this is Inspector Torrance, Sergeant Pringle. You should know them. Uh, they have something to do with the platform brigade. Okay. Uh, make yourself comfortable, boys. Uh, sit down, Linda. Well, what's the occasion? I dropped down to the station, and here's the inspector making you. Got to say, rub your nose, so I thought I'd come along for the ride. You talked to James Lucas today. So what? Not a thing. He wouldn't open up. None of them will talk. 
Listen, Mike, there's something going on, and it doesn't smell like lilac. All those guys quit in the market. I hear the two fires, and a couple of trucks turn angels and go right straight up the air. So? So everybody shuts up like a clam. I ask them questions. They look at me dumb and innocent like. I don't like it. You're just sensitive, Inspector. No, inquisitive. Yeah, whatever his name is, Polak. Sis, he slipped on the floor and smashed up 20 crates of spinach or something. He's lying. They're all lying. What do you want from Mike, Inspector? I want the truth. Oh, I know with you, Mike. You, it's always a private fight. Sometimes there's too much at stake for one fellow to carry the load. Now, there's something going on. That's devilish. You got me, Inspector. I wish I knew. Get this. Oh, that's what it is. Supposing I were to tell you that somebody's trying to bust up the market. That's home in jail. Then what? Do I have to prove it or they won't? I don't think you can prove it yet. I know I can't. Nobody can. You're a great help, Mike. Both of you. I'll lock you up in the car. You would if you thought you could get away with it, but you can't. The law demands facts. And truth, Inspector. Oh, yeah. We'd have it if they talked. And you're the one to make it. No so. But all you got to say. Like if you lift, Linda? Oh, thank you, Inspector. I'll be seeing you, Mike. Tough going, huh? Could be tougher. Need a friend? Well, I had one. Yeah. I've been pretty rough, Mike, haven't I? Suppose you have no policy. Is that bad? Is that good? Are you still here? Afraid so. I envy you. Oh, we're old friends. Kind of envy you twice. Once for an old friend. Second time for the price you're putting in. Are you kidding? No, envy your job, your work, and everything connected with it. Well, you can for bed either, Doc. Full of glory. Pain you sit here and there, piece of you. Patch up with fractures. Find a few cracked ribs. You, you help to take care of the whole city. You help them to help. It's like it is an important job, especially these days. What are you two trying to give me? It's not just waving the flag, pulling you up and down a string of the crowd to watch. What you're doing is all unheralded. Nobody's going to pin a medal on you. You're kind of cracked on the subject, aren't you? I don't agree with you, Mike. Your market means a great deal of the people who do it. I think what it means is they just took the milk away from the children. Maybe they will. What did you say? Me? I didn't say anything. You started this. Why don't you go home? Well, if you say I can come back again. Well, all you got to do is knock, and if I answer, come in. Night, Mike. Night. Night, Miss Gregory. Well, Doc, watch the bike. What are you thinking about? Oh, that Doc. And you, sticking me up on a pedestal. What do you think I am? I know. Uh, keep it a secret. It's embarrassing. Can't you take it? Yes, but I'm not used to it. Now get. Good night, darling. Good night. Morning, Brian. Morning. Oh, Mr. Moore called. What do you want? Said he wanted to see you right away. Let him wait. He's still the boss. I'm the boss. All right, I'll go and see you. I planted potatoes here someplace, but I can't find them. Oh, my darling, they don't grow on top, you know. You have to dig for them. I guess it isn't done yet. Oh, hello, Michael. Sit down. Here in a hurry. I like to get things over and done with. A police commissioner dropped in on me last evening. There's been some ugly rumors about the market. Well, it isn't exactly a kindergarten. It's a legitimate enterprise, Michael, and there's no place for brawling. It's your job to put a stop to it. Well, it isn't as simple as that. As an attorney, don't you think it advisable to hear both sides of the story? There always are two sides, you know. 
Michael, don't you think you're being a little outspoken? You try right. If you listen, I'll tell you some things you don't know. Some of our old standbys are quitting business. And a lot of the farmers and dairymen have already folded up. Well, whose fault is that? Somebody's putting the pressure on. Trying to muscle in. Muscle in? Yes. Take the farmers and commission merchants pay for the privilege of doing business. Somebody's trying to organize a racket. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, notify the police. You talked to the commissioner yesterday. When does he start? Well, all I can say, Michael, is if you're running the case, you have to put an end to this family. Well, I'll do the best I can, but they're doing nothing against the law. Well, now, how about the attacks on the wholesalers? Simple assault. Any smart lawyer can beat that rap. No, it's strictly legitimate. There's no law that says a farmer here can't charge 50 cents for it. The difference goes into somebody's pocket. Oh, they can't do that. The prices are regulated. Well, I only know this, Michael, and I'm speaking to the syndicate. You'll have to take this matter in hand, or... Well, you'll get a new boy. Well, you see how we're situated? It's so full of red tape, it looks like a ribbon counter. And I tell you to get a new boy right now. I'm sore enough to try and clean out that bunch of chiseling drafters. Michael, you know, sometimes I'm afraid you'll talk too much for your own good. Our food may come from the earth, but our men should be a little above. I'd rather keep my feet on the ground. It's safer. Oh. Just a moment, Michael, will you? Mr. Lynn, won't you come here for a moment? Just like that, huh? I'm Iris Moore. I understand you know something about vegetables. I wish you were wrong. I'm having trouble. Nothing seems to grow right. Can you tell me what's wrong? Mm-hmm. You have ants in your plants. Never mind the garden. Let's talk about you. It's a very boring subject. I never heard anyone speak to Father the way you just did. Maybe I was a little bit rough on him. Don't you ever talk to him like that? Oh, no. You should try it sometime. Most men like spirit. Most women, too. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Tell your father I couldn't wait any longer. I didn't have anything more to say to him, really, anyway. Yes, I'll tell him. Well, so long. Keep your onions straight. I like you. And I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mr. Lynn? He just liked Father. Oh, might have waited a little. Oh, well, he said he was sorry to go, and he asked to be excused, but he said he had some important work at the office. Honestly, he apologized all over the place. Len apologized all over the place? Oh, my darling, you sure? Yes, Daddy. Honestly. Isn't she beautiful? She is gorgeous. Every night when I go to bed, I dream. And you about who? Your wife. No, my letters. Oh. My wife gives me arguments. My kids give me trouble. But my letters, she gives me pleasure. I know just how you feel. I once used to get a terrific bang out of an old tomato I knew. And speaking of tomatoes. What are you doing here? It's about my onions. You told me to keep them straight yesterday. I followed instructions carefully, but you know what happened? No, what? Nothing. That's why I'm here. Mr. Mike, you're squeezing her too hard. Don't tell me you're going to be a pest. Mm-hmm. A ladybug. Where's your car? Back there. And that's just where you're going. Oh. Am I that ugly? No. And you know it. Just the same, you're a pest. <laughs>
Get him out of there, Pat. What happened, Danny? Somebody stole a brick. You see who it was? No, it came too fast. I wasn't expecting it. You've got to get out of here. But haven't I been helping? Sure, you've been swell, but just the same, you've got to get out of here. Beat it. I'll be back again soon. What happened to him? Oh, he'll be all right. Get him in one of the stalls and call a doctor. See you later, Danny. You never miss a trick, do you? Nope. Who is she? Oh, I don't know. Some kid wanted a job. She's cute. I got more important things on my mind. So have I. What's this all about? Hmm? Oh, just a personal matter. Danny got in an argument with another driver. Mike, if you could lie halfway decently, I could take it, but you can't. Why don't you lay off? I did. The paper would fire me. And if I lost my job, I have no husband to see me. I mean, not yet. Look here, Linda. Mike. Mike, I've got to talk to you. You don't want me to. That's the right answer. Yes, I'll be running along. What is it? There's been some trouble down at Ryan's Dairy. They've wrecked the refrigeration system. One thing after another. Danny's just been hurt, too. See if they get home all right. I'll go. Mike, I think they ruined everything. They poured some acid in the ammonia. We've been threatened, but I didn't think they'd go through it. One of us to raise the price of two cents a quart and hand it over. Two cents. Somehow I remembered. The trouble started about two days ago. Some of our suppliers hiked the price of cans 50 cents. We paid them. No. Those who didn't had their milk dumped. Yeah. If I could only get some proof, I could go to Inspector Torrance. But first, I've got to get the proof. Brian, what does this shutdown mean? Very little milk for the city. Better get the plant fixed up. Well, when we do, they'll only mess it up again. Two cents a quart is the important point. Nothing's important except those kids get their milk. Will you stand by me? Well... Now look, Ryan. You and I don't matter. A lot of innocent people are going to take this rap. And I'm not going to let them down for you or anybody else. All right. The price stands. Thanks, Ryan. Now all we've got to do is deliver. Hello, What's Johnson doing? Just handed me his notice. Here's one from Brown and Faraday, too. Anything else? Moore called. He wants to see you right away. He's at his house. Mike, something's got to be done about this right away. If this keeps up, there won't be any market. Hello, Moore. What's the matter? I'm afraid I have bad news for you. My shoulders are broad. I can carry a little more. Said they could hold a meeting this morning. They're uh, worried. The trouble at the dairy, the smashing up of that truck, and, and all the other things. What are you getting at? Michael, I hate to be the one to have to tell you this, but I've got to let you go. I argued with them for over two hours, because in spite of all your faults, I still maintain you're the man for the job. Too many against me. I'm very sorry. Believe me, I am. Or I had you all wrong. You're a regular fellow after. Mm -hmm. We all have our faults. In the meantime, if, if I can be of any service... No, no, me. thanks. But I appreciate it. If you ever need me, call on me. I don't forget paper. And that's a good effort. Please call on me sometimes, will you? I hope this doesn't mean that we still can't be friends. I wouldn't miss it. And thanks for softening the floor. Make, and I'm going to make it. Oh, but what about the people? 
What about me? You can take care of yourself, but there are a lot of others who can't. Let them worry about that. You mean let little babies worry, little kids who need their milk, and mothers who need fresh vegetables to feed them? I'll leave that to the humanitarian. I must have been blind. Me, running around, boosting you to the sky. Mike is this, and Mike is that. I'll tell you what you are. You're a hundred percent all right. You're a hundred percent healed. So, you're walking out on me, huh? No, I'm not walking out on you. You're walking out on yourself. Mr. Moore, you don't know Mike. He'd rather take the rap any time than give alibis. I'm sure he could get to the bottom of all this. I think so, too. Well, now, you get the tangible facts and then go straight to the police. Uh, Inspector Torrance, I think his name is. If things turn out as you say, well, we'll only be too happy to talk these all over again, Mr. Lynn. I know Mike went to see a man named Craig, and then there was another one. I think it was Foster. Foster. I'm sure that if the police found these men, it might help clear matters up. Well, you'll get your evidence and then go straight to the police. And he'd get his job back? First, I'm not too sorry we ever sent him away. I won't say anything to Mike just yet. <laughs> My name's Linda Gregory. Didn't I see you at the market? Oh, yes. I'm Iris Moore. Moore? Jeffrey Moore's... No. I heard Mike had resigned, and I wanted to know that. He didn't resign. He was fired. Father? I won't go with Jeffrey. I wouldn't be quite fair. Sorry if I can lose. You like Mike, don't you? Mike's the other side of the track. Rough. Well, that's out of your... On the contrary. Look, Mike's just plain soap and water, as honest as they make it. Mike and I are an old established firm, do you mind? Not at all. I enjoy a little competition. Don't worry. There won't be it. Inspector Torrance? This is Bram. Yeah, with Mike Lynn. I think I have some information for you. That's perfect. Now, look, get over here as soon as you can. No, I won't tell him a word. About 20 minutes? I'll be waiting. Without your white overalls. Oh, uh, Miss Moore, it's Dr. Page. Hello, Dr. Page. Hello, Miss Moore. And you know Linda, of course. For a moment, I was worried. All gone now. Hello? What? I'll be right over. What happened? Penny. Stay here, Mike. I've got to go. Yes, yes, you better come along. I may need you. Mike, I owe you an apology. I shouldn't have blown up at the office. If you hadn't, I'd have been disappointed. Come on. Well, it uh, looks like I'm hosting for the evening. Um, would you like a drink? Yes, please. Oh, is that 
be over in 20 minutes. He didn't show up. In about a half an hour, I got this call. They picked him up to the headquarters. What are you looking at? A man. Michael Lynn is here, wants to see you. That's interesting. Show him in. You're a stranger, Lynn. Craig, I've been on the wrong side. That's quite an admission coming from you. I had to take quite a beating before I found out. I played the great emancipator. Got a kick in the pants for it. Then I found out it was a cinch to get that extra two cents for a quart of milk. <laughs> well, you gave me the idea. You said it wasn't worth that much? I thought I'd show you it was. Who did? I know a fellow that's got a little kid just... just that tall. Couldn't find any place to buy milk for him. He'd have given five dollars a glass. It was all sold out. You're right. The chump will pay. What are you going to do about it? I can set up that two cents and we can go from there. The boys at the market are all with me, even though I'm not there any longer. How do I know you're on the level? If I'm not, my life isn't worth two cents. We'll begin on that basis. And as far as we're concerned, I'm at that. That's all right with me. And we stay within the law. We make the bullets, they fire them. I'll get your cut mixed up. You'll be plenty satisfied. I'm sure I will. Daddy with you? No, dear. He, he's gone away. When will he come home? Well, he, he asked me to take care of him. Daddy told you that? Mm -hmm. You don't like me. You scolded me. You scolded Daddy. Now you quit talking like that. Yeah, I'll take it. You leave her alone. 
My, my, you've been a busy little girl, haven't you? Can I look at your book? Can you read? Uh, a little. This is my girlfriend. <laughs> my, this is wonderful. Who drew these beautiful pictures? I did. <laughs> That's the funniest cow I ever saw. That's no cow. Oh, thank God. What is it? A terrible dragon. You never saw a dragon. Oh, yes, I did. Where? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> and only you, the buyers of produce, can force these prices down. In my opinion, it is criminal. The way they are making you, the taxpayers, carry the burden. Send in your protest, call in, do something. Help me to stop this racketeering, this hijacking of your purses. I have taken up this crusade because of my experience, and I want you to benefit through that experience. Without cooperation, we can do nothing. In unity, there is strength. Everything under control? Not quite. Ryan has to go to court and show reason for that two-cent heist in milk. He should be able to do that. Oh, he can. Says the opposition's pretty strong. Syndicates against him. Ryan expects Jeffrey Moore to handle the case himself. Pretty smart. <laughs> we'll wait. You've done a good job, Mike. Now the next step is to get the produce boys in line. Oh, they're already on the hunt. There was a farmer over at Riverview who had to take a slight shellacking, but now he's willing to deliver his lettuce where we tell him. <laughs> we'll have the city eating out of our hands. Rather neatly put. And no ceiling prices to worry about. That'll keep the government off our trail. What about the trial? Well, you should cover that, don't you think? I wouldn't miss it. Order. Order in the courtroom. Isn't it a fact that you raised the price of milk immediately following the accident at your dairy? Yes, sir. But it wasn't because of the accident. You were intimidated, were you not? No, sir. I have my dairy and I run it to suit myself. And how do you account for the sudden raise in your prices? Well, production prices have gone up. I have to pay more to the farmer. Distribution costs have risen over 20%. You know, things aren't as cheap as they used to be. If I can't raise my prices, I'll just have to close up. Go, witness. As a member of the board, did you approve this increase? Have the merchants ever asked for police protection? No, sir. Do you suspect they're being intimidated? Well, Jack, the same. Were your drivers ever threatened? The populace cannot function under... Your... The people's law. Prosecution West. Uh, Mr. Moore, the evidence you have offered has no bearing on the case whatsoever. The defense has conclusively proven the rise of the present mark. In view of that, I see no reason to sustain the injunction. The added price of two cents a quart has been definitely proven a necessity. Case dismissed. I've got a stinking hunch you're at the bottom of this holdup. That's a stupid thing for a cop to say. Especially when you let people get murdered and don't do anything about it. That's because we're up against some pretty low types of human beings. Like you, for instance. You'd double cross your own mother if you had one. Keep your hand off me. Mike! Robert. Sorry, Sick. It's all right. I've already ordered. How'd you know what I wanted? I asked for the best. Keeping me happy, huh? I heard what happened. I guess there's no turning back for you now. Not after your little argument with Inspector Torrance. I hate nosy coppers. You're a marked man, Lynn. You'll have to watch your step. I leave that to you. You clear the way. I won't stumble. I'll tell you this much, uh, Mike. Up to now, we didn't trust you. Why not? I haven't missed an angle. You still could have given us a double cross. 
perhaps you're slapping cops around. Mm -hmm. I imagine we can trust you from here on in. I think the big boss will tell you so himself. I'm not interested one way or the other. As long as I get my cut. Oh, Miss Delalyn, too much isn't good for the child. For the child? For me either. I know who I find you. Sometimes I wonder. Here, I'll take it. There we go. Up, said Daisy. Why not all the issues of all of you? I tell you a story before I go to bed. Oh, no. The last time I went to sleep. Yes, and I made off for my big doll. And did you look funny in lipstick? <laughs> I'll go. Hurry back, Uncle Mike. There we are. Let's start. You'll never see me again. I never thought about it. What do you want? Mike, you've got the problem. Father sent me away to the country. What's wrong with the country? Plenty. No guilt. Father doesn't want me to see him. Oh, that is serious. More than you think. But what if he finds you here in town? You won't tell him, will you? Oh, I guess not. Where are you going to stay? Francis would like yeah, me. Francis would like anybody. But this isn't Grand Central Station. Oh, all right, all right. I guess I'll have to spend the night with Gil. Not all night. And most of the evening with me. Well, what are you all dressed up for? I'm going down to the USO. Oh, don't tell me you're going to dance with the boys. <laughs> oh, I should say not. No, they love my doing it. And that's the least I can do for the boys in the service. More than you ever did for me. Saboteur! Hello, Mike. Hello. Mike, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll say goodnight to Frank. All right. Have a drink, Foster? Thanks. Nothing for him. He's had too much already. Huh. Bourbon okay? Yeah. You got a date with a big shot tonight. Craig say so? Yeah. Looks like we'd be taking orders from you, too. We'll always be taking orders from somebody. Agreed, then. With friends? Good night, sweetheart. Yeah, hurry, baby. Stick around a while. What gives out tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh, yes. Mel Shaw, one of the commission merchants, wants a little going over. He insists upon cutting the prices. Two one kept up. leaving for the country. Hello, Gil. This is Mike. Grab your bag. Get over to my apartment as fast as you can. Yes, it's been an accident. Hurry up. Well, Harris, you don't have to go back to the country. Oh, my God. Trouble. Ah, forget it. I love trouble. Police headquarters. Yes, sir. Right away. Wait a minute. Hello, police headquarters? Just a moment, please. Go ahead, Mr. Lynn. Inspector Torrance. 
Hello, John, it's Mike. What's the matter, Mike? You know you shouldn't phone me. Yes, I know. I have to. Listen carefully. I'm supposed to meet the Brains tonight. First, send someone out. Pick up Graham and Foster. They just left my apartment. I'll make the charge later. Yeah, you've got to make it stick this time. Okay, Mike. Get radio car 16. Have them follow Graham or anybody with him. They're at the Palm Department. I'll be on my way. Have them phone me. Uh, there are. Bad that. You'll have your fixed up in a couple of minutes. Don't ask any questions. She's been shot. Huh? Foster and the boy still there? All right, have him trail in wherever he goes. That's all. Hello, Jeff. This is Ken. Something's happened. Oh. Well, he's reported to the police, has he? Going to turn me in? <laughs> oh, Ken, you almost missed your step then, didn't you? In just a few more hours, and we'd have walked right into the welcoming arms of the police. Now, let us know, Annie. Yes, you know what to do with him, and, and don't waste any time. See you later. Mike, I hate to do this, but it should be reported. Gil, if anybody can save her, you can. It's got to be done this way. I'll take the responsibility. Mike, you tell Father. You explain to him. He's at home. He, he has a meeting with Mr. Craig. Craig? Ken Craig? Yes. You tell him it's all my fault. I will. Don't you worry. Good luck, Bill. You're not leaving. This is your department. I've got another job. Good luck. Thanks, I need I will from now on. We're in a jam, honey. So you stand by. Yeah? Hello, Stay here with Graham. I'll cover the house.
That'll be all, Henry. I shan't need you anymore tonight. Now, uh, Mr. Lim, what can I do for you? You're pretty clever, Moore. I lost my job and was ready to cry for it. You know, you shouldn't come breaking into people's houses like this this time of night. It's upsetting. I'll say, and you're ready for a fall. I know now how the whole thing stands. Oh, yeah, that's very unfortunate. Do you have a cigarette? I hate to do this, Lynn, but you give me no alternative. Well, keep on talking. I'm interested in what you have to say. I've got plenty to say. You're pretty smug, you are. Making that great talk over the radio. You are for the people. I'll say you are. You're for what you can get out of them. Talk about the fifth column. You invented a new one. The sixth column. With food, one of the most important items for our morale, you stand behind the flag, cheating the people, racketeering babies. They ought to hang you for treason, and they will. Oh, you might get me more. But you'll never get 130 million people. 130 million that hate you and you're kind and everything you stand for. <laughs> Splendid. It's very, very dramatic. I had no idea you had it in you. Sixth column, eh? Well, oh, that's a new one. And a good one. Too bad nobody will ever hear about it. What are you doing here? We call it Lynn. Well, where's Foster? Oh, he's listening in, I guess. What happened to him? Oh, Lynn nearly killed him. Made a pass at some gal. Oh, Greg. What's going on? The chief's taking care of him. Well, you better take Graham home and meet me at my place later. I want to take this in personally. It's too bad you didn't stick to your word and work with us instead of against us. Because now I'll have to put you out of the way. But this year's an attorney, I'll have to figure out a defense. Oh, yeah. You were in my employ and I fired you. You hated me and broke in here for revenge. I shot you in self-defense. <laughs> it's bad publicity, but I have a reputation and a good one. I'll be able to live it down. In the meantime, the sixth column will go on as though nothing has happened. But something did happen. Someone very close to you was hurt tonight. Iris was shot. Iris? You're talking rubbish. Iris is with friends in the country. I wish she had been. She was shot trying to save my life. That's why. Then you're lying. No, I'm not. She told me about you and Craig. She didn't know what she was saying. But I didn't. You're finished. You'll pay for the death of Graham. I know enough now to make you all walk that last mile. You're not lying about Iris? Where is she? Is she... Is she dead? No, she'll probably pull through. But when she finds out her father... Strange how unimportant everything seems now. I was... The only thing I had to live for. You got here first, Mike. I was coming to get you next. This is as far as you go. Poor old fellow. He had a lot to live for. I was listening to his defense. What good will that do you? He figured it all out for me. All except the end. That's where I used my head. He said you hated him, were coming back for revenge, and he had to shoot you in self-defense, but he was wrong. You shot him, and then committed suicide. How do you like that? You don't frighten me, Craig. My life will be over in a second, but not yours. When they catch up with you, they'll march you up a flight of stairs. Somebody will put a black hood over your head, and you'll cry. You'll beg for mercy. And those last few minutes will seem like a lifetime. Shut up! No, you didn't, Linda. You broke a vase.
I think I'll adopt it. I don't think the court will let you have it. What's the matter with me? Nothing mentally, but I thought not physically. You see, Francis needs a mother. Oh. Do they care what she looks like? No. I've got one right here. Oh, no, you yeah. haven't. I don't mind taking care of a child, but I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man in the world. <laughs> what she said. She won't marry me. I will. Can you cook? Can you wash? Ate it. Well, what can you do? Love you. You do. I did it.